What are the best Ulysses tips and tricks? In this video, I'm going to count down my favorite insider Ulysses tips for writers. This video will save you time and turn you into a Ulysses power user. What's up guys, this is Michael Aram with Author Level Up, giving you the best tools and strategies for writing faster and reaching readers with your stories. Ulysses is a great writing app that helps you write your next book with ease. Compared to Scrivener, it's more streamlined, but there are still some features that are not immediately obvious when you first start using it. I've been using Ulysses since 2015, and I've written fiction, nonfiction, blog posts, and video scripts in the program. There are tips that I've learned from over the last few years that have made my writing sessions easier. So let's count down my top 10 tips for the app. Number 10 is when formatting, use the previewer to see how your book looks. Ulysses uses Markdown, which is a language that makes conversion to HTML easier. So when you're writing and you come to a section of your book that needs special formatting, it's helpful if you think ahead to how you want the book to look in its final form while you're writing. Ulysses makes this easy, and you can always use the export button to preview how your book looks at any time. I found that the preview is extremely accurate too, so once you get it right, you can move on. When you're writing a section of your book that contains formatting, like ordered lists or block quotes, always be thinking about what they're going to look like in the final book. Number nine is to use favorites. Since Ulysses gives you a universal library, be sure to utilize it to its full potential. Use the favorites feature to star documents that you find yourself using a lot. Let me give you some good examples of favorite documents. You could develop a house style of editing rules to follow and refer to it anytime you're editing. You can use a favorite character sheet or use a favorite for an outline of your novel. If you write a blog, you can create a document with some of your favorite links pre-formatted so that you don't have to type them out every time. If you write nonfiction, you can favorite some of your key research data to use faster in your book. In any case, favorites are your friend. Number eight is to use the markdown menu. You don't have to memorize the markdown elements. Ulysses offers a markdown menu button that will tell you exactly what to type if you want to use a markdown element. Even now, I still find myself clicking on this button when I need it. If you highlight your text, click the menu button, and select the element you want, Ulysses will automatically apply the formatting for you. Number seven is filters. Filters are a simple way to organize your library. For fiction, you could create filters that contain only chapters from one character's point of view. Or you can use filters similar to how collections work in Scrivener to help you create a box set out of items that already exist in your library. Don't forget that Ulysses also offers the ability to use negative filters. So instead of collecting items that have certain text or keywords, you can also collect items that do not have certain keywords or text too. That's helpful, especially when you want to search for items that should potentially have keywords, but maybe you forgot to add them. Number six is for blogging, preview HTML first, then copy and paste. So Ulysses is helpful for blogging. Markdown translates well to your blog, and you'll seldom have to worry about formatting issues. To get a clean copy and paste from Ulysses, though, is another story, and it requires an additional step. So don't just copy and paste from your Ulysses document. It'll look like this. <laughs> no, 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 you don't want that. Instead, click the Export button, Preview in HTML, and then copy and paste from the Preview window. This will look much cleaner. See what I mean? And don't forget that Ulysses offers direct export to WordPress if you want to use that feature. Number five is to use the Ulysses style exchange. Don't settle for the plain white or black styles in Ulysses. There are so many different styles that you can use and download to customize your writing window. You can find these on the Ulysses style exchange where you can download custom styles for your app. Add some color to your writing today by using a different style. Number four is adjusting your markdown color scheme. Once you've downloaded a new style, you can adjust the color of each of your markdown elements. For example, if your style says that the comments will be gold, but you want your comments in red, you can change that in Preferences, Styles. That's a minor tip, but it's a helpful one. For example, when I'm writing scripts on my YouTube videos, I insert notes where my B-roll appears. When I'm editing my video, I have Adobe Premiere and Ulysses up side by side, and I can scan through my Ulysses document for my B-roll notes. It's important that they jump out, hence why I make them red. Number three is deep search. All writing apps allow you to search, right? But only Ulysses allows you to search for text elements. For example, if you want to search your library for every instance of an ordered list, Ulysses can do that. 
If you want to search your library for every instance of a link, Ulysses can do that. This is so incredibly powerful that its importance can't be understated. With a universal library, you can search for anything you've ever written. No other writing app on the market offers this level of search. Number two is the backward slash. A common problem early on with Ulysses is figuring out what to do when you need to use a bracket or an asterisk or another symbol specifically reserved for markdown. What happens when you want to use a bracket but you don't want to use a markdown element? The answer here is to use a backward slash in front of any element that you don't want to be marked down. So, the backward slash becomes invisible when you export it, and it tells Ulysses that the symbol that follows is not markdown. This one little tip will save you lots of time and headaches when you're formatting, and it's one of the things that I really struggled with in the beginning, and I'd wish someone had told me before. The backward slash is the least used button on my keyboard. <laughs> it's not incredibly intuitive to use, but it does work. Which brings me to the last tip. The number one tip I can offer you for Ulysses is section breaks. This ties into that last tip. If you want to use a section break, how do you do it? Because if you type three asterisks in Ulysses, <laughs> it's not going to render properly. Here's how you do section breaks in Ulysses. You are welcome. And if you found this video helpful, you can write a check out to the Michael Laron Trust Fund. I'm currently accepting donations. I hope you found these tips useful. The more you use Ulysses, the better at it you'll become. For more Ulysses tips, check out my Ulysses Essential video series. Link is in the comments. And if this is your first time watching, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I publish videos just like this one with writing and marketing advice to help you write better and grow your influence with readers. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.